Hey guys, come on in. Say hi, Echo. Hi, my name's Danielle Filosa, and this is my handmade home in New Harbor, Maine. Welcome to the Seawood Sanctuary. Um, this house was built in 1977, built by a wonderful man named Peter. This was before I knew who Peter was, but Peter Canoss was living at the time in upstate New York and saw an advertisement on the cover of a newspaper to build a home for himself sustainably in Maine. So he decided to move to Maine and go to the Shelter Institute and in where he decided to build this house. From 1979, he started living in it. August of 2020, the house went on the market and it was a pretty big deal for him to do. And it was also a pretty big deal for me to buy. But then once we met, it was almost like a passing of a torch. What I love about this home and I think what other people love about this home is the light and the windows. These like open pan windows are really beautiful. And the fact that you just kind of get to see trees from every angle facing south. It was built south so that the sun comes in and it's solar. It felt like I had been here before in a weird way, but also that it had its own soul to it. It kind of felt like I was just walking into a piece of art. I like to call it the snow globe, especially when it's snowing, because you just kind of feel like you're in this little pocket of stillness. Like, I, I call it the sanctuary for a reason, you know? Let's start in the kitchen. So my kitchen is pretty tiny. It kind of feels like a boathouse kitchen. But what I love about it is the open shelving. I get to really think about the glassware and the bowls that I chose. So everything kind of, this in itself feels like its own piece of art, which is nice. I found these really adorable like cast iron. I think they're ashtrays. I think the simplicity is great. I think it kind of keeps me to have to be organized, which is really nice. So this makes me think about intentionality a lot. It makes me think creatively in ways that I wouldn't have before because of just how it's laid out. I got this idea from a family friend of just decorating your refrigerator rather than keeping it boring and white. I kind of have just like made my own collage and all, all these things kind of have like a little story to them. I also get a lot of ridicule from my framing my fish bag, but I just think the graphic's great. This is a score being kept in, I think a 1977 basketball game that Peter did while he was watching the Knicks versus LA Lakers, which I think is kind of symbolic and funny because I am from LA and Peter is from New York. So we have this to match. Uh, ourselves, but I'm never gonna take it down. I think it's great and I don't wanna erase it. So this is the living room. This is mostly like entertaining space and there's a lot of really special pieces in this room. One of them is my car print. I bought these when I was 19 at a flea market. Knowing that I've kind of always consistently had the same taste is something that I am proud of, I guess, in a way. This I love, that's just a needle point. Everyone that ever sits in that couch is always like, what is that? Is that made out of fabric? But then I have this kind of wonderful and bleak life stage of a woman that I got at an antique mall in Wisconsin. I wanted to start collecting like women's suffrage art. What this says is a telling of the times of where women were at. This is kind of the Peter and Danielle combination wall. So this is one of my favorite pieces and this was a gift my mom gave to my dad in the 70s. This was definitely the inspiration for like the nautical theme for this wall. Then I found this like amazing sailor last year at a garage sale for a dollar. That kind of matches perfectly with him. And then these were Peter's, um, these like old fish like that I love. And so was this, and I just clipped some seaweed into it. And so was that. And then these seashells were Peter's as well that he collected from like all over. I think those ones are from Australia. So I found this piece at a vintage store in LA when I was living there again. I was like, I'm gonna get back to Maine. I'm gonna get back to Maine. So I had this map being like, one day I'll be back in Maine and I'll hang it on my wall. And now it's hanging on my wall. There's a lot of like history, I feel like, in just the things that I own. And I love that. My first job I ever had was at an antique shop when I was 14. 
So there's just been this like interest for things for a very long time. I think there's a lot of beauty and especially in old things, you know, craftsmanship and how things used to be made versus how things are made now. It's very, it's very different. So this is the guest room. I should also say this is my mom's room. She'll get very mad if I don't say that. This is my mother's bedroom. Uh, also the guest bedroom though. This room was an addition, but it feels like it wasn't because of how consistent it is and how well he did with matching it to the other side of the house. For me, like the house in itself is a, a piece of art. I think it was really important from the get-go to not really do anything about it, just like keep it how it is. And then for me just to be able to add my things to it. I get to be in this beautiful home that he built. Anytime I do something new, I always like send him over a video or a picture and be like, look what I did. And he's always very excited to see. And I love for him to be involved still. And I think he really enjoys being involved as well. He said to me, he never knew this house could look as beautiful as it now does. And it really was very sweet. I'm gonna give you a little tear in my eye. <laughs> I appreciate what he has done and now he appreciates what I have done and I think that's what makes it feel really special. My dad passed away in 2018 and he wore this ring from the age of 16 until 78 when he passed. So I got it and put it in a little box frame and so I get to see it every day. You can frame jewelry, you can frame anything. If you can frame a fish bag, you can frame jewelry too. We come to the upstairs. This is the Zen Den, is what I like to call it. I do all my computer work here. So this is like my TV area. I do a lot of crafting up here. And then I found this piece that I love, and this was a deal. I found this for 40 bucks, and it's an old shoe factory toolbox. Trunks are go-to always and forever. I've been, I've been trunking things since I was 18, actually. When it comes to moving things, I would always keep like all my art in a trunk and then move it that way, which is really easy. So yeah, I'm forever grateful for trunks because they look great and you can put stuff in them. I found these two couches on Facebook Marketplace, but they smelled like a 70s nightclub when I got them. So I aired them out and now they smell great, but that was, you know, a risk you take when you buy something on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> this house, because it was built in the 70s, just really complemented the style that I already liked. I think it's like nice to kind of stay in the time frame of when it was built. Collecting things has always been something that I've just been drawn to, but I think it's for me finding things that make me feel good. Like it's just, it's kind of, that sounds like pretty simple, but it just is that simple. Like I think for me, it's really important to find things that matter because I'm the one that's gonna look at them all the time and I wanna like them and I don't wanna just look at them because I feel like I have to put something somewhere. People get rid of things because they don't really have meaning to them, but if you actually are buying things that you really genuinely like, then you're not gonna wanna get rid of them. Um, Echo agrees, I think. Rugs. I got this rug and the rug in the Zen Den and the rug in the guest room in Morocco. I lugged them on my back for like two two and a half weeks. <laughs> and my friends thought I was a little bit out of my mind, but they made it and they've been here now for like six years. Because everything is open, I thought the best way to keep things safe was to put plants here into this area. So plants are protecting us in most areas. <laughs> two things over here. One is this latch hook that I did myself during the COVID. And I was like, one day this will go on my house wall. Didn't have a house yet. One of my other oldest pieces is this elephant that I got at a garage sale when I was 18. Still have it. The frame's broken a couple times, but it's still, it's still moving. I had already been building my aesthetic for so long that it was more about just finally being able to put my stuff somewhere. It feels pretty good. The structure was already beautiful and then I added my things into it and I like my things. So it just kind of blended well and now it looks really nice. It honestly feels like I finally get to rest too because I did so much moving. And now we all get to just like be together in one place and it's really nice. And I think we're all really happy about it. And then this is my bedroom. I think one of the coolest features when I first saw the house was the little walkout window. I love that deck. I love seeing that on that deck. When I saw it, I was like, 
this this person knows knows what's what's up. It's really fun when I have parties, like to have friends down there, people up here, people upstairs, people outside, and to like view everyone at their different angles. It's really awesome. Echo, come on, let's go inside. Come on. Upstairs, you can really get to see the timber beams and the idea of why the house only has windows on this side and the reason of why it's slanted is because it's south facing, so the sun and solar come this way to keep the house um, warm. And then there's a bunch of different wood slats open up and then there's a whole ventilation system all around the house and that's to get air flowing. So during summer, it can stay cool, which is really helpful. And it's also really beautiful to kind of watch like the sun and to kind of see the intentionality between where the light is coming from. I don't ever want to be a person that designs just to fill spaces. I want to be a person that designs that makes someone feel a certain way. The things that are in this home make me feel a certain way. So even if like I'm doing nothing on a daily basis, if I can just look at my things, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> I have a couple friends actually that have really found a lot of inspiration in this home, which I think makes it even more special. To be able to be in a space that you feel inspired in is honestly like the ultimate goal of what I've always wanted to have as a, as a place to live. So for that to be now happening for others is really special to me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Handmade for more tours just like this.